Uh, I was going to respond to your entire video, but you've proven yourself not to be worth my time. This is an interesting statement given that the creationist in the very same video then goes on for another two minutes about some evidence against evolution that is nothing of the sort. What it amounts to is misrepresented facts that do nothing to refute the theory of evolution and nothing to bolster the fantasy that is young of creationism. The purpose of this video is to address the slide seen here and the creationist ridiculous remarks addressed to myself. This is to demonstrate how closed-minded this person truly is and his continual use of creation is tactic number 11. This is supposed to be a scientific reference. It is not. Let's ignore the spelling errors for a moment. Vertebrate transitions are well supported in the fossil record despite claims made by this fruitcake. And what use are bicipital features in fish anyway? If they ever formed in marine life, they would likely be selected against. Fins are much more suitable for a water-based existence. And now on to the spoken claims. Uh, however, before I go, I would like to... This is not a real-time presentation, and we're not having a face-to-face -face or video phone conversation. Well, I would like to put something forth to you that will give you a few scratches on your noggin. Childish and arrogant, completely inappropriate. Something for you to itch about for a while. Actually, no, this amounts to no surprise for anyone with any intelligence. What we are about to see is a further misrepresentation of facts as I've already demonstrated in the original series and here. I do try to be generous with evolutionists. Evolutionist? And yes, the creationist is generous with insulting remarks and ad hominem attacks against his critics. He certainly has no actual evidence for his position to offer, so all he can do is lie and misrepresent the evidence that supports real science. They are in need of lots of help in understanding things. Far from being in need of help, evolutionists know far more about biology than creationists will ever know. This is proven in the creationists' comments alone. And for the record, I've never heard of professional scientists in their field attack creationists in this infantile manner either. Do you see this picture? Yes, it's nothing more than misrepresented data with gibberish words written by someone who has no understanding of the sciences he attacks. This picture is an illustration of a tetrapod and fish, spine and ribs. It's a poor illustration. It combines two anatomical features and then makes a claim that because they're not the same, evolution must be unscientific. Any person at this point will probably ask, what the hell? Let me explain something to you. The creationist explains nothing. Watch for yourself. About the difference between fish and tetrapods. Tetrapods are four-limbed creatures. Fish are not tetrapods. Is there a point? However, evolutionists claim that fish transitioned into amphibians, and amphibians into, you know, reptiles, and reptiles into mammals, blah, 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 we know the big joke. The only joke here is creationist science and logic, and that was an appeal to ridicule based on creationist lies. Okay. But here's the big problem for you evolutionists. Let's hear this big revelation that the creationist is about to confound us all with. There is no evidence of transition. How disappointing. All this turned out to be was another lie. Now let me explain this a little bit better for you, because you're going to need a little more explanation, I know. The creationist knows nothing about biology. This is probably not going to sink in too well. Since I'm not gullible nor a religious fanatic who needs fairy tales to survive and therefore I'm free to accept solid, dependable evidence wherever it goes, this is not likely to sink in too well with me at all. The creationist might as well go find someone a little more gullible to try peddling his snake oil to. Evolutionists either don't understand or often pretend not to understand what's being told to them. So I'll try to make it very simple and clear for you. What's simple and clear here is creationist arrogance and hubris. So please pay careful attention. The creationist is the one who needs to pay careful attention. You see, fish have basal stumps. Basal stumps? A Google search provides references to plant life, as well as a reference to the Richard Dawkins Foundation site where this ridiculous claim by this particular creationist is highlighted. There's nothing about fish anywhere, ever. This is yet another lie. Whereas tetrapods have tuberculum and capitulum. Fish do not have diapophyses and parapophyses. There is not one fossil that has ever been recovered from this earth that demonstrates the transition of a spine of a fish into that of a tetrapod. Not one. And this is yet another lie. There are transitional forms that address this issue very concisely. The creationist will probably come back and claim that this is false, even though it's supposedly not worth his time, but that doesn't change the facts. Now, I wonder if this creationist has heard of Ventus Dega. 
The problem here is that there is no physical evidence that fish ever evolved into tetrapods. Making a claim such as this without backing it up with evidence amounts to nothing more than an argument from ignorance. You see, because fish do not have parapophyses and diapophyses, tuberculum and capitulum. And this is a problem for evolution how exactly? The driving force behind evolution is natural selection coupled with genetic mutation and genetic drift. It is responsible for the vast biodiversity of life on this planet. Understanding this fact allows one to understand that no matter what morphological differences exist between living organisms, transitional or not, they are the result of the same process. The existence of certain features in one transitional form and then either modified, added or removed features in a transitional form later or earlier in the same lineage does not falsify this observed fact of biology. That a creationist does not understand this observed fact does not make it disappear. So this is nothing more than an argument from incredulity. Now when I debated Per Alberg of Uppsala University and Dr. Mark A. McPeak of the University of Michigan, I asked both of them the question if they could provide me with evidence that fish had transitioned into tetrapods. When did this supposed debate take place? In which forum? If this was an online debate, which method of communication was used, a forum or email correspondence? If it was a physical location, where, when, at what time did the presentation start? You see, Nephil and Free has provided no specifics for us to check upon it, and any artist researcher would be more than willing to do so. The fact that the creationist has not divulged this information despite having been asked by multiple people, time and again, leads one to believe that he's simply making this supposed debate up, like so many others of his ilk. Neither one of them would answer the question. Both of them skirted the question more than once. Now let's assume that this supposed debate did in fact take place. Of course they didn't answer the question. It's the most basic evolutionary question known to even first-year college students who are studying evolutionary paleontology. There is abundant evidence, and even I know that, yet I'm not of the same caliber of education as either Dr. McPeak or Dr. Alberg. The study of marine life to tetrapods is very well understood in both the fossil record and in genetics, so anyone researching is expected to already know the evidence for fish to tetrapod evolution is abundant and widely available. That someone would ask if there is any evidence for this is an indication that they have no idea what they are talking about and I would expect any professor of paleontology or biology to tell this individual to purchase or borrow a basic college textbook on a subject to find the information that they are looking for and then to waste no further time with this individual. So I say again. The creationist can say this as many times as he wishes, even if he clicks his heels three times while washing away the evidence, the trick will not work. The evidence is going nowhere. We are in an age of information where lunatic creationists like this one cannot destroy the hard work of hundreds of thousands of honest people in an attempt to maintain their grip on their beliefs and the power they hold over the gullible. There is no physical evidence of evolution. Evolutionism is, evolutionism is a term invented by creationists and has nothing to do with reality. Is presumption, assumption, and uh, con speculations conjectured as fact. Perhaps the straw man the creationist refers to is just as he stares, but attacking a straw man is rather easy compared to trying to attack the real thing itself. And this is another instance of projection since creationism is exactly what this creationist accuses his straw man of evolution of being. There is not one bit of physical evidence for evolution, my friend. We are most definitely not friends. Such a monster can never claim to be friends with someone like me. I won't stand for it, ever. And the claim made here is a repetition of a lie. You swallowed a grand lie. No, I haven't. I'm not a creationist, you see. Science does not support your worldview. My worldview, whatever it may be, has nothing to do with the validity or otherwise of scientific theories such as stellar and explosive nuclear synthesis or evolutionary biology. Neither of these two subjects has anything to do with a worldview. The creationist is invoking yet another straw man. It supports creation. No, actually, it doesn't. Creationism requires the invocation of miracles to explain why the physical realities do not explain the biblical account of the natural world. Miracles are a part of the supernatural and are nothing more than magical incantations. And we've never seen anything magically created. Life forms don't appear out of thin air, man was not made from dust, and woman was not made from a dirty rib.